Yes, I'm wearing armor. We should probably talk about it. Everybody's got opinions when it comes to hard armor, i.e. rifle plates, whatever you want to call them. And just like everything in life, you got options. Stick around. We'll talk. All right, gentlemen, and the 4% of the female audience that still exists on this channel, let me talk to you a little bit about rifle armor or rifle plates. I want to talk really fast and I'm going to brush through a lot of these points right here because there's a lot of videos and a lot of information out about it. But just so you know, when we start talking about armor that will stop rifle threats, you're typically talking about a hard plate, like hard armor that might look something like this. And they come in all sorts of configurations and ratings. If you're curious, the NIJ rates armor or gives two ratings, level three and level four. The real distinction between them is level four is rated for armor piercing, black tip 30-06, level three will not stop that. There are some manufacturer ratings that are somewhere between three and four. They start talking about special threats, three plus. You're gonna to have to refer to the manufacturer's notes about this and their specific testing for their plates understand that there are some pieces of armor that are actually NIJ rated. That means they were sent off independent lab was tested and it was tested under very specific and arduous conditions to receive that rating. Some cheaper armors don't have that rating. They say it was tested to that standard. That could be important or may not be important depending on what you're using this armor for, how much money you have to spend. There are several different types of armor and I want to brush through them really quickly. Steel armor, I don't want to beat on it. It can be used. Heck, I have some. The beauty of steel armor, it is very difficult to bust up. So if you're training with it, if it gets dropped, treated uh, as soldiers and cops often do, the odds of you hurting this plate is really, really low. Uh, it will probably last forever. I'm sure that there is a manufacturer rating saying, hey, this armor expires after a certain date. They have to do that for liability purposes. But understand that if this doesn't rust through and wasn't already shot or beat up, I suspect that 100 years from now, it'll still work. Now, this is a pretty light steel plate. There are much heavier ones out there. This one is only rated to stop 7.62 by 3.9. I do not believe this will stop either green tip or M193, and I don't believe it'll stop 308 ball or any of those other issues that I'm talking about. This is literally a special threat plate. It's also pretty darn expensive for what it is. Most of the steel plates out there, like AR500, if it has a chance of even stopping some of those faster or more penetrative rounds, it's gonna be heavy. So you're talking about a plate that probably by itself is gonna be between eight and nine pounds. That starts to add up pretty darn fast, especially if you're carrying it around all day. I don't hate steel, but understand there are mobility limitations. In addition, if it doesn't have any spall coating on it, if a round hits it, fragments of that round will tend to go outward at a relatively high rate of speed. It is my opinion that a carrier that holds those will probably capture a lot of it. So the spall factor may be overblown. I think maybe your carrier itself may eat some of that up, even if the steel does not have that coating on it. Opinions vary. Some people get really worked up about steel and spall, and I get it. I'm more worried about the fact that I don't have any faith in steel to stop M193, which is a super common round. You're talking, you can order off the internet. Heck, for the longest time, Walmart was selling it. I'm uh, sure several sporting goods do, um, Academy, any of the others. You could go buy 193 right now, and it is fast. Out of a 20 inch barrel, it's going at least 3,200 feet per second, if not faster. Velocity and steel, that's where it starts to run into real, real problems. And I found at least one video segment of somebody showing how 193 will cook right through. I'll put that somewhere. You can see it. I don't have faith in steel to stop M193. And I think M193 is super common. So if you're wearing something that you think is going to protect you under a multitude of situations, I don't think steel is that. But like I said, good for training, long-term durability. You know, it has its upsides. Is it heavy? Will it stop some threats that I'm really worried about? Um, yes and no. So that's the downside to steel. We start talking about ceramics. And I should probably veer off and talk about armor that's rated as standalone or in conjunction with. I have several plates 
in my possession, like this one right here, it's ceramic, but it is rated level four in conjunction with. That means it needs to have a level three Kevlar backer to go with it. Otherwise, it's not going to stop level four threats. So whatever weight savings you get from this pure ceramic, because it's in conjunction with plate, starts to fade when I have to slap another several layers of Kevlar behind it. The good news of ceramic is it doesn't tend to spall. It tends to capture the round. It tends to weigh a little less than steel in most configurations. The downsides, if I drop this, kick this, treat it like soldiers, sailors, and cops treat their stuff. At some point, this plate is not going to have the same strength that it has now. It's just not. So I have to be aware of that. With steel, I can be very casual with it. I don't care. I am not going to be dropping a carrier that's got ceramic plates in it. Uh, not if I'm counting on it to save my life. So weight, a little more bulk, and a little bit delicate. So I have to be wary of that. Next, we talk about ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. I always have to look at the acronym. It's super lightweight, like a pure polyethylene plate doesn't weigh anything. It is actually neutral in terms of flotation, like it will float. That is awesome. It will stop almost everything except for green tip or anything that is armor piercing. We start talking about green tip. It's once again, everywhere you can find green tip ammo at the store, you can order off the internet, widely available, and a pure PE plate won't stop it. From that perspective alone, I'm not inclined to run it. Like I said, if you know for a fact no one's shooting green tip at you, then PE plates are awesome. They are so light, you almost feel like you're not wearing anything. Where it's probably at in terms of overall weight and efficiency is a hybrid plate, one that has some PE in it and some ceramic and maybe some other ingredients, to all come together to get that rating. And that is really where I think, were I going to buy some plates right now, what I would buy. And you can spend as much or as little on these as you want. I have seen some hybrid plates that are less than six pounds that will stop all the way up to level four. And they're a thousand dollars a plate. Uh, Velocity makes them. I, I like those hard to get and super expensive. Their plates are very nice. You can step down a couple levels and get some that are NIJ rated that will still do all of that. But as the weight goes down, then we start sacrificing a few other things, either rating or we start sacrificing weight. So your mileage may vary. If you are looking for an expensive setup, then honestly, my current favorite is probably the Velocity Systems Scarab carrier with either some velocity or some middle of the road Hesco plates, they're okay. That whole setup probably set you back 700 to a thousand dollars. For your reference, by the way, this is a velocity carrier, but it's one of the older ones. This one is a um, APC. Their Scarab I think is nicer. The shoulders on it are nicer, but either way, man, they're nice. There are a bunch of other decent carriers out there. So don't, don't think that velocity is the only game in town. Just they're local to me. Everything's onshore US made. And so I like their product quite a bit. I've met their guys, good people. But what if you don't have $300 just to spend on a carrier? What if you don't have another three to $700 to spend on the plates? And that's if you're buying middle of the road plates and not like, as I was mentioning before, those thousand dollar plates, you buy two single thousand dollar plates, 300 plus dollar carrier. Now you're up to 23, 2400 bucks. If you've got that cash and you wanna make that outlay, go for it. I'm not saying don't do that. Heck, spend. You know, you got money, roll with money. But if you're a little more on a budget, then I would probably start looking at something like this. It's a LA police gear plate. I 100% guarantee you this bad boy was made in China. 100%. I'm not even remotely going to contest that. And so from the Chinesium angle alone, if that's a, a sticking point for you, then it is what it is. I'll just leave it at that. But this plate weighs less than six pounds. It is level four rated stand alone. And I say rated, it was not tested by the NIJ. It was tested by them. So it bears their stamp of approval, not an external testing source. In addition though, or at least as a side note, there are multiple videos of this plate getting shot a lot with all the way up to that aforementioned 30 out six black tip and it stops it. Uh, Mr. Guns and Gear did a bunch of tests with these plates, no issues. 
Is this going to be as good as a thousand dollar plate? No way, there's no way it could be that good. Will it stop multiple hits? Yes. As a side note, I always see people on the internet start talking about, well, how many hits will it take? Ladies, gentlemen, if your plan is to stand there and let somebody pound at you with a rifle repeatedly in the chest, then I submit that your plan is flawed. This is a backup plan to save your life, not to turn you into Robocop or the Terminator. So let's be real, let's be realistic. Is something like this, in my opinion, sufficient for most people? Yes. Is it the best solution out there? No. If you've got a lot of money, like I said, go for it. LA Police Gear often has sales, and for that matter, they always have 10%, 12% codes. I'll post like how much I ended up paying for this somewhere because I don't recall off the top of my head, but I recall two of these plates plus a carrier was somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 and it was the LAPG carrier. It's not a high dollar carrier, so take it for what it is worth. But if I've got two of these plates, which are less than six pounds each, plus this carrier, and it's still got the back plate in it, you know, is this a cheap carrier? Yeah. Does it look cheap? Yeah. Am I going to go ruck marching through the mountains of Afghanistan for six to 12 months with this thing and hope that it holds up? Negative. But for what it is, add two plates. If you're looking to get into rifle rated protection and you don't want to spend a ton of money, I think that LA police gear setup is definitely one to take a look at. Now in the description, ladies and gentlemen, I'll put some other options if you've got more cash, but I will tell you that if you're trying to get into something that's going to protect you from rifle type threats, don't have a ton of cash, then that LA police gear one is probably not a bad idea. In addition, if you want to go a little more, uh, I don't know what the word is, but you wanna add some capability to this, I will put in there some quick release cummerbund options and also a chest placard that you can put on here, uh, S-Tac. So if you want rifle mags and pistol mags on the front, pistol mags I'm less worried about on the front, but I am worried about having some rifle mags on the front. You can go way down that rabbit hole, you can spend a lot of money, or you can get into the rifle rated protection game for not a lot of cash. So in general, I would start to consider some of those options if you feel like you need something like that, but you've got other financial concerns. And like I said, if you wanna step up to some higher dollar stuff, I'll put those links in the description as well so you can kind of pick your poison. But in general, the threats that I feel like you or I might be normally subjected to, they're really, we're talking 223 or 556, M193 and green tip either so prevalent that if your armor won't realistically stop both of those, I feel like it's a non-starter. On top of that, I probably want to worry about some of the common hunting rounds, which is why 308, any type of M80 ball, uh, I need armor that will stop that. Do I think somebody's going to be shooting at me with their Garand and black tip ammo? I'm guessing no. So that pure level four rating, do I need it? No. Do I want a level three plus at least for rifle threats? Yes. So like I said, consider those things, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not gonna beat this up any further. I will put like some B-roll footage of that S-TAC placard with the clips to put it on the front of the LA police gear carrier. So if you want to have something that's a little more like this for a little less than this one, then I will give you that other option. It's gonna work a lot better for you. And like I said, even with that other stuff, I think you can get into it. If we put all the bells and whistles on it, even with that placard, the clips, quick release cummerbund, you're talking less than 400 bucks. For those of you on a budget, that is an option. Now I will say like right at the very end, do I feel like the odds of someone shooting you with a rifle is great? Probably not. If you look at the number of people murdered every year, murdered, killed with guns, the number of people actually shot with rifles of any sort, not just semi-auto rifles, is so small, you're more likely to get bludgeoned to death with a hammer. Especially if you and the homeless guy who broke in are both hanging out in your underwear with cocktails and a hammer. That could totally happen. I digress. Seriously, like bludgeoning implements, you're much more likely to get beaten with than shot with a rifle just if we look at the whole universe. But I understand that dangerous times create different situations. So if you want to get into the rifle protection game, here's some options for you. I hope that's helped you. 
And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, I appreciate a like. If you thought this was dumb and horrible and you didn't enjoy it, thank you for watching all the way up to this point. I appreciate you. Ladies, gentlemen, take care. Stay safe. I'll talk to you soon. Get him, Jay.